Okay. I think I think we're live. Um, welcome. I have a bit of time between a couple of projects, so I wanted to do some prep work on something big for the van. Uh, what I'm, I'm this this has been I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'm adding an oil cooler to the van. Um, we now live in a pretty warm area in the south of the U.S. Uh, it's already, it's not even for us. Uh, it's about to get into spring. And it's, thanks for joining me. Uh, I want to share, I just got the oil cooler system. Okay, let me see, that's a little dark. Let me see if it's a little better. I'm just unboxing it now. This is so incredibly exciting, but it's also kind of terrifying because uh, so this is part of why I wanted to do the video and have people sit along with me. I'm kind of I'm not terrified because of the complexity of what the work is. It, it, it doesn't seem like it's that hard. Uh, here's I have the instructions. I've gone through them several times. It's not that big a deal. But uh, what's terrifying about doing this is. The van runs right now. It's running well. Everything is great, and I don't want to take it apart. If I take it apart, there's a chance, uh, you know, the, before when I was working on stuff and I was taking the whole engine apart, it wasn't that big a deal because it wasn't running. So my goal was get it back together, get it working again. But now everything is working, and I'm about to take a whole bunch of the stuff apart and hopefully I do a good job and put it back together. But so the reason behind the oil, oil, oil cooler is these older engines, they get really tired. Uh, over time, the oil will go in between as things get worn and as temperatures go up, the oil will go into all those extra crevices or areas where the metal has worn down, worn away, etc. And then it ends up causing very low uh, oil pressure. Uh, so having an oil cooler allows for that temperature to be a bit lower and gives your engine um, longer life, uh, especially if it's an older engine. If it's a newer engine, then it helps just all around. Low oil temperature just helps, period. So. Uh, I went with Intrepid Overland's package and what they do, which is kind of fantastic, they use they use one of those sandwich adapters in between your oil filter and the engine. And hi, thank you for joining me. Uh, and then they have an entire system that goes into the pillar, the air pillar on the side, on the passenger side. So, and it's set up with a fan so that what it does is as, um, as the oil gets hot, let's say you're just sitting in traffic and there's no air going past the engine to keep it cool. While the, while the coolant is keeping the engine cool overall, the oil temperatures also, let's say if you're driving really slowly somewhere, same kind of thing. Uh, keeping those temperatures down is super helpful. So the oil cooler itself just runs the oil through a system to cool it down, uh, but then it also has a fan with a thermostat. So it'll kick on and recycle so that um, it'll hopefully keep those temperatures lower. Lower temperature, lower, lower a longer life for the engine. Um, so this is extremely exciting, but it's also kind of scary because now I'm going to have these two hoses that are going to go from the they're going to go from the sandwich adapter up and over the engine, and then go into the pillar over on the side. So what I wanted to do is just have a bit of uh, uh, encouragement by doing it live and having some friendly faces uh, help me along the way. This is then the pipe, this is the air pipe, that what it's going to do is go from uh, the module and the fan over on the side, uh, and it's going to kick into the air intake. And by having this, what it'll do is uh, it'll help continue getting colder 
colder air that's coming through the vent uh, rather than right now that, you know, how there's like, it's either cardboard or some kind of material on the side that used to close off. There's a pillar on the side and that just falls apart with time, gets wet, etc. cetera. Uh, so this will continue to help because also the system that's going to be over on the side. Thank you for joining. People are waiting. Hello. So let's open this up and take a look at what we got. All right. And then the cool thing too is they have it set up so so you can it can it'll turn on on its own with a thermostat, but also you can set it up so that you can turn on the fan for this remotely inside with a switch. All right. So this will close off the spot over inside. There we go. All right, so this is the actual oil cooler unit. There you go. I just, I have two little cameras going, so. Uh, this is pretty awesome. Oh, I, so this is, this must be the thermostat over here. There's a little thing sticking out, I don't know if you can see it. Um, in and out ports, there's the fan. The fan's going to be sucking air through the tiny, tiny, tiniest of radiators. There, I think you can see it there. Um, and so the oil will come through, cool down, go back to the engine. Okay, so this is the wiring for it. Let's see what else we got. You know what, I'll put this back in there. Well, I'd like to say thank you for joining me, even if it's for a little while. Uh, as I said, I, I, I'll take all the moral support I can get at the moment, because when things are running, it feels like we shouldn't go in there and uh, fiddle with them. <laughs> hi, Chris. Thank you for saying hi. I hope everything's good with you guys. So this is the sandwich adapter. Um, this will have both ports over here. So it'll go in between filter and engine. And this is also what's a little scary too at the moment because I'm using a glow shift sandwich adapter right now to use to do the old pressure in old temperature those that's where my senders are and i have those gauges in the front so i'm essentially taking out two sensors that are working right now to use the space for the oil cooler and then i'm relocating those sensors that's also part of what's a little scary too i'm relocating those sensors uh over to there we go i'm relocating those to the low oil pressure sender that's in between the push rods. I'm gonna take that out, use a relocation kit and push that up to the top. So then I'm gonna have three different things connected to that three senders, uh, oil pressure, low oil pressure and oil temperature. And then the sandwich will only be for sending of the oil to the oil cooler. All right, and what's this? Washers, oh, here's 90 degree um, hose adapters, the bolts to get them in there. All right, and all of the hardware. Okay, so that's the stuff that came in the box. The other thing too is I'm not gonna be using the van for hopefully for a couple of days or even a week or two. Um, we have some spring break travel plans because our kid has time off of school, so this would be the perfect time to do it. I have instructions. So what I'm going to do now is simply, that's the other thing too, is I've been, I've been running the van for a while now and it would be good to do um, just a regular oil change, change everything, take a look at the filter, make sure everything's good. So without further ado, let's get rid of that oil. And if it gets boring, I'm sorry about that, but if there's any questions, anything you want to say along the way, 
Uh, anything you're interested in finding out about the oil cooling system, please do um, type into the... Uh... Hi from Scotland. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen, for joining. I know this will not be the most fun video, but uh, it'll... It's very needed on my end. Uh, it's very necessary. So I need to go get some stuff and get this oil out of there. Um, one thing I'll mention. So I've been using for a while these kinds of oil receptacles to catch oil. Uh, overall, they're pretty good. But I've had one where I thought I was catching the oil really well. And then it turns out... I kept seeing a little bit of a stream over on the side. I, I didn't know what was going on. It kept kind of poking out on the bottom. No, it had cracked. I didn't notice. I ended up losing it. This was one of our, we had a Honda Fit. Uh, I know that. I think in the UK is the Honda Jazz. The entire, the entire motor oil ended up on our driveway for that one because there was a big crack at the bottom. I didn't realize. And the whole thing um went down and onto the ground so before you put oil before you think this is going to catch it uh i kept moving it around thinking oh no how did i miss so much you know that first spurt of oil as it comes out uh usually it's hard to catch but the rest of it you can catch no i completely just missed I, sorry all of it went in but it was cracked so it was pouring all over uh the floor so Lots of cardboard. I always do lots of cardboard. And if I can, a bag or two underneath just in case to catch oil. Because I've learned that you can't always trust the container you're using. Uh, don't know much about Vance, but excited to learn. Hey, Craig, thanks for joining. And if there's anything that you think you might learn, by all means, if it's super boring, I truly apologize. But uh, it's this has been a really great project in terms of... Um, it helps so much with kayaking because between being able to drive uh, to a put-in, but also giving the chance of staying at any of these places because you have a place to camp in, that's been fantastic. All right. I think I have the tools I need to get the oil out. And it's a little chilly in the garage, so I apologize for the, you know, it looks like I'm going to rob someone. But yeah, it's quite scary to make the van go from running to not running. By choice, I'm making it not run now. But as I said before, hopefully it'll be no big deal. Uh, I get everything in and then we can just move on and make things easier. And hopefully it'll be great and set for the whole summer because that'll be fantastic. Uh, it's already... We've had already a couple of days that have gotten into the 70s, 80s out here. I um, don't remember exactly how much is that since centigrades. I, I grew up with a centigrade, but I've gotten so used to Fahrenheit. I'm guessing that's what, like low 30s? I'd have to look it up or do the calculation. All right. Let me see if I can bring you guys down here and you can see some of this stuff. Okay, that's down there. Let's see if I can get the computer down here. All right, there we go. All out of the way. Okay, not a lot of room, but what's really great, there, I'll bring you guys over here. No, no, that's in the way. There. What's really great about these little engines, these old engines, is uh, they're just so simple. But one thing I really like is that the drain plug is directly vertically down. So whenever you open them up, they pour straight down and you don't get that crazy amount of spillage you get in normal cars now because the drain plug is sideways. And I think... I might be wrong. If someone knows, there you go, 70 degrees, 21 centigrade. What about 80 degrees, Stephen? 
Is 80 like upper 20s, like 26, 27? Sorry, just doing conversions. Uh, okay. Uh, in a lot of uh, newer cars, you'll have the oil. Um, the oil plugs are kind of on the side. And I think a big part of it is so that if you end up hitting the ground for any reason, you won't shear off the, the bolt. But this one is pretty much covered in the indentation, so it's not that big a deal. I'm pretty sure it's a 13. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. All right. We're going from a van that was running with oil and everything 26. Thank you. Uh, to, I mean, oil change doesn't do anything. It's super easy to do an oil change. But knowing I'm taking the whole thing apart after draining the oil is a little scary. All right, hopefully I get it in there. There we go. All right, not too bad. Hey, the oil looks pretty good. I mean, it was not in there a long time. I didn't do a lot of miles, but still, you always hope. And you know what's the other thing, too, is when I got the van, um, thank you, Craig. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Uh, the other thing, too, is when I got the van, it had a blown head gasket. That was one of the toughest things I had is uh, I had all the signs that it was probably a, a blown head gasket. So that means whenever you checked your oil, you would find um, coolant in there. And that's one of the worst things you can have. Um, it's, it's such a without with a blown head gasket that just is asking for trouble and you need to repair it and getting to either replacing the head gasket or figuring out why it blew in the first place is such a pain. Um, but it's so nice to see clean, thick oil instead of, uh, and seeing absolutely no coolant in here. That's a huge win. And I know it should be, if everything's running, that's how it should be. But you still always have those fears from previous events. But anyway, so now what I'm going to do is just let that drain. Next, we'll be taking out the oil filter. I'm going to have to take down the sandwich adapter. I don't know if we'll be able to get you in there to see. But one thing I could also mention that is important, I'll have to go get it. Uh, if you happen to have the 1.9 engine, which I have, that's the smaller, earlier version. Later on, they had slightly bigger engines uh, that I think it's a 2.1 or 2.2, 2.4. I, I can't remember. But this one, I, I happen to have the earliest, the smallest. And with this one, with the stock exhaust, All right, here we go. Ugh. With the stock exhaust, if you're gonna put a sandwich adapter, whether you're doing it because of uh, using gauges or you're doing it because you wanna do similar to what I'm doing, the use the sandwich adapter for another reason. Oh, that's a really funny thing. <laughs> it can be sticking out on the side. Anyway, uh, if you wanted to use a sandwich adapter, on a 1.9 with stock uh, exhaust, you're gonna need, this is the regular filter that usually you use um, for the 1.9. I think this one works across all of them, I'm not sure. But uh, with the sandwich adapter, it ends up hitting the exhaust. So you need a smaller version that happens to fit perfectly, works well, but um, it will not interfere with your stock uh, with your stock exhaust. I'm just looking at some of the rust I'm going to have to take care of someday. There is so much rust under this van. Anyway, if if you need the smaller one, this is uh, the one that will work. It's a man 
uh, W712-80, men712-80. I apologize, it looks like the cameras are backwards on both of these. I think it's doing the reflection thing. Um, I'll change that for next time. But uh, both of these will work. One will fit. Uh, it's strange, strange seeing you out of your kayak. <laughs> I've expected you to be doing this from your cockpit. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. That's true. But you know what, though? This van is what helps me get to a lot of these put-ins. Uh, because of the pandemic, we ended up just, we, we have only one car. And so the van is my car or my mode of transportation if I want to do something on my own. So this is the way I've been able to get out on the water is having the van actually run. And so far, so good. This year, it's been doing fantastic. And uh, I can't complain. There we go. It looks like almost all the oil is out. I'll also have to go through all the spark plugs and just do a general tune-up to make sure things are still good everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's fantastic. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know what, I'll try. I'll bring the computer in here. Uh, it is stylish too. Yeah, I mean, this van, you know, I just I, I I love these things. They they just look they look fantastic. But also, the way they're engineered, everything fits so well in such a small footprint. Like it really feels like. Don't get me wrong. German engineering has always been fantastic, but there's something about the way these buses are designed that every little nook and cranny is thought about, and it works so so well. I just I want to get. I want to start using it as much as possible now. Um, and I'd like for it to be reliable. That's, I think, the hardest part of it. But so far, so good. Uh, let me see if I can set these up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have a light here. I'll make this brighter. Maybe I'll get another light. I might need more than one. Sorry, guys. Ooh. There we go. We got two. So I'll get you under here. This is where's the filter? You know, I think I need to turn off this whole reflection thing. Oh, there's the filter over here. <clears throat> it's hiding. There, it's up there. Let me get a light over here. There we go. All right, I'll bring the computer in too. Hopefully you guys can see. Let's see if I tilt you up here. There we go. It might be hiding for the computer. The filter is right over here. Yeah, it's hiding. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get you guys in here, but anyway. I'll just explain what I'm doing and then maybe I'll set it there. Uh, so I'm taking oil filter down, sandwich adapter down. Sandwich adapter right now has two outputs. They're the senders for oil pressure, oil temperature. And then this you might be able to see if I tilt it just right. Uh, maybe not from down here can you see it all right i might have to do it one at a time see that brown cable right there right in there that is the low pressure sender all right i'm going to bring now because i have the laptop for youtube on live let me see if i can bring this in here and show that same there it is you can see it from there right in the up, upper corner of the screen this might not fit it's just so big all right so there's the push rods right no you can't see my hand yeah this laptop is just way too big i apologize about that 
But in there, between the push rods, let me see if I can get my hand in there and point at it. Because when I get my hand in there, then it gets dark. Over here, there, there's my finger. That right there is, that's the low oil pressure sender. And it, um, that is there to let you know if your oil pressure gets so low that it's dangerous and you need to pull over immediately uh, and stop. Like if you lose oil, if you have a leak, if something happens and that one will just, a big alarm will just tell you there's no oil pressure in your engine, shut it down immediately. So that one, what you can do is that port, you can open that up and relocate that sender somewhere else. And then from that, tee off and have a couple of other senders added to that. So that's where I'm going to be uh, pulling then from there, relocate it to the top of the engine. And then from there, have a triple T so that I'm going to have low that low uh, oil pressure sender, regular oil pressure, and oil, um, oil temperature all together and then the sandwich adapter will just be used for the oil cooler so all right it looks like the oil is almost done draining seems to still be going a little bit i don't know if you can see the little trail still kicking down there but this seems like a good place to uh to say bye for now uh thank you all for joining along for a little while this was part one i'll try to bring you back uh every little bit if I get to work on it a bit more that I can get the computer going uh, and the phone. So thank you so much for joining you. I hope that was insightful in some way. If you happen to be doing a similar restoration, uh, it seems like a lot of people that are either in warmer climates or um, that do a lot of stuff like rock, not rock clone, uh, crawling but you know what i mean just out in the desert or exploring or if you're going to be driving in higher temperatures without a lot of airflow over the engine it seems like using an oil cooler of some sort uh is very beneficial to these older engines just something to think about uh, but i'll let everyone know how it continues to go and i'll catch you next time cheers thanks everyone catch you soon how do I end here? I don't know. There we go. And now. Oh, I didn't do it here. There we go.